please welcome Zach Oates from Ovation Up. What's up, team? Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about how I built Ovation with twenty thousand dollars in marketing budget. So, a um, little bit about me, by the way. Uh, grew up in New Jersey, and yeah, they do teach you how to use blow dryers there, which is how I became six four. So. Basically, what Ovation is, is it is a feedback platform primarily for restaurants. So we have uh, a little over 2,000 restaurants we work with, a little over 2,000 restaurants, about 100 retailers, and uh, one blood-sucking lawyer. Other than that, we primarily work with restaurants. So I don't know, do we have, oh, there we go. So um, we were doing 40K in MRR. We had been around for a little while, kind of like slow, 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 slow. But the problem was that we were growing fat, right? We were growing out. Um, and then COVID hit and just everything sucked. And then we were trying to figure out what to do for a little while. And then we've eventually kind of like, you know, hit our stride. Um, so, but before we get into this, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. So I have a four-year-old, a three-year-old and a nine-month-old. And basically um, they run around all the time crazy so this is this is our backyard and we have our our kitchen table is like right here and they would run around our kitchen table and run around and run around and run around and they would just smash into this glass door just every single day just smash into it and my and they actually uh would escape and so um and th this is not a fenced in backyard there's a lot of cows back there they come up like right to this fence so it's a little you know and they would like stick their hand through the fence and try to pet the cows so my wife got a little uh, worried, and so she put in this lock. Well, as part of putting in this lock, she drilled two little holes right there, right? And when she drilled that second hole, psh, the whole thing shattered. Now, the reason I bring this up is because, think about that, hundreds of times my kids pressed against, like slammed into it, but because there was so much surface area that they were hitting that glass, it was totally fine. But that one little, one little drill bit, and boom, the glass shattered. So we're talking about the reason I bring that up is because one thing that I learned in this whole process of COVID is that you can do if if you're doing a lot of stuff for a lot of people, you're really doing nothing for anyone. If you do something for someone, that's what gets you to break through. So if you're looking for money, forget the TAM. Screw the TAM. Let it go. Focus on what can you do for a very specific group. So I'm going to talk about this, uh, this B2B, uh, how to do B2B marketing. And it's really focused around being accepted by your niche, doing a podcast. Who here does a podcast? Okay. Everybody should do a podcast and I'll tell you why. And then second one is trade shows. There's a, there's a very easy, cheap way to win at trade shows. I'm going to talk about that. So be accepted by your niche. First of all, this is this is the amount of LinkedIn connections I've added uh, new connections per year, and in uh, 2014 I did an MBA, so I got a lot of a lot of connections there. And then I started actively marketing in 2018, looking for people in our niche. And so this is you know if you're adding this many people to your LinkedIn uh, per year in a very specific niche, you're gonna you're gonna get to the right people. Now the reason the thing I call it is I call it pip cats. Partners, investors, press, customers, advisors, thought leaders, look for the pip cats and connect with them. Okay. These pip cats are going to be what's going to, this is, this is how you unlock your business, but you, you first have to pick your niche. Then, uh, contribute with your personality. Who are you? Right? So this, I, I like food as you can tell. Um, but you know, this is like, you know, do case studies, post personal stuff, post thought leadership, post things about your company. So these are things that as you, the more that you post and the more that you're connecting with your pip cats in your niche, the more you're going to be. Then ask yourself, what does your team lack? Rory was talking about finding people who had done it before, right? So find out what is your, what does your team lack? What do you need? What do you need for that credibility? So for me, I found somebody who was, okay. Uh, I found somebody who was five years ahead of me. John Moody founded a restaurant 365, found somebody who was extremely respected in, in the industry. I found somebody who had a lot of credibility in food and beverage. And then I found an investor who uh, ended up putting money in, but 
there were there they only invest in hospitality tech companies so as soon as i took money from them all of a sudden we were all over the news about you know these guys invested in us so find these advisors now one thing that i did is have you guys heard of a fast template no yes maybe so use fast template founder advisor standard template so this is uh this is what i used for my advisors to get them on board and how I gave them equity and how I knew how much to give them equity and everything was already kind of decided before we had started working together right because it's already it's already kind of like predetermined what are you going to be in there like uh, how much equity based on your stage so when I talked to the advisors I, I you know send them a LinkedIn message um would love to connect we chatted and then I would say usually sometime on that first call I'd say hey you know we are looking for advisors uh would love to talk to you about that and then i'd kind of gauge their interest now we had a couple people say no and that's okay um we had a couple of advisors that came to us that really wanted to be a part of it and then conversation two and three i realized that it wasn't going to be a good fit for us and so we kind of uh, said no um and that's okay but when you find those good advisors they are gold because not only does it does it really solidify you as a key player in that niche but then they have all the connections they have all the people to go and introduce you to so second thing do a podcast now first of all you don't need a ton of equipment to do a podcast okay go online and get one of these mics it's a hundred dollars if you can't invest a hundred dollars into this, then see me afterwards. I'll give you a loan, very low interest. It's not that much money. And, and the key is just start, do it. You don't need a lot of things. If I'll tell you what, even if you don't have this microphone, I do, I do about 30% of my podcasts with my MacBook. Okay. I use the mic that's on them. Why? Because how many audio files are there out there? Like these people that are just obsessed with really good audio quality. Let me tell you in your niche, probably not that many, right? So don't, unless you're in a podcast niche, then get a really good mic and set up and disregard everything I'm saying. Um, but why you're, so now you're connected to your Pipcats, right? You're connected to the, to the press, investors, partners, customers, advisors, thought leaders. So if you're connected with them, invite them on the podcast. And I'll, I have a template for you to, to use to invite them on the podcast, but what are you giving them? You're giving them content to make them look good, right? Even if you are a nobody, I'm a nobody. Why did they come on my podcast? Because I created a couple of podcasts initially with really good quality and it's fun and it takes 15 minutes and there's no prep call. Don't, don't, don't make them work for it. Tell them it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes, right? So you have a few minutes in the beginning of like, oh, hey, great to have you on the podcast. You've done some really cool stuff. Okay, you ready to go? Then at the end of the podcast, what do you say? Hey, thank you. Oh, by the way, the last question to ask on the podcast is who else should we have on the podcast, right? And then you reach out and, and who do all these Pipcats know? Other Pipcats. So then you reach out to the other Pipcats and be like, hey, you were just mentioned on the podcast by this guy. So would love to have you on. And she's like, oh, cool. I'll come on, right? So now all of a sudden you're getting really cool people on the podcast. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then at the end of the call, the last five minutes, you say, by the way, do you know what what we do at Ovation. And they're like, oh, I kind of checked you guys out. Yeah, we do guest feedback for restaurants. We're working with these customers. Do you know what? It would mean so much to me if I could just chat with you later on next week and would love to get your opinion on what we do. And you know how many, Domino's is now a customer because of this, right? This is how we're able to, to build these relationships. Now, this is gonna come in handy. Um, yeah, so do it cheaply. You can find people to edit these podcasts. It's very, very easy, very simple to do that. So I have this whole template that I use uh, where I take the name, the company title. Anyway, I, I have this in the, in the notes for you guys where this is the template that we use to, uh, to edit. By the way, what do I use to record? Wait, you said you, ever, you had a podcast, Mr. Blue? What's his name? His name? Yeah, what's your, Brian, what's your podcast? Scale Up Show, okay. Yeah, so you're like a big deal. See, I'm like, uh, I, do, I do like pizza podcasts, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. There we go. And um, so, what what do you use to do your recording? So I use, uh, I use, I edit, I use, I use, I use, oh, 
what, oh, like what, what like program do you use? Riverside. Okay. Okay. So again, like 29 bucks. I can't afford that. I pay zero. I use Zoom. <laughs> use Zoom, right? Like if, if you can't afford, if you're doing like high quality stuff, then yeah, obviously there's, there's better programs out there. I'm almost 200 podcasts in. I've done every single podcast on Zoom besides the two I've done in person. That was very awkward, right? I prefer Zoom. Um, and so then I have this whole template of how to get people, how to invite people, um, what to send them, either, you know, what to send them in the email. And this is actually really good. So what I do is I have, uh, this is my template for every single podcast that I do. It's again, make it really simple. It takes me six minutes to prepare for a podcast because I have the template down. Of, I know what I'm going to ask them. I know how I'm going to do it. So just make it scalable for yourself because these meetings aren't just, it's not just about the podcast. It's not about the listeners. Look at this. My first like hundred episodes, I had 6,700 downloads. You probably get that in the first five minutes when you release a podcast. Well, like, but the, the thing is like, I don't care, right? Because I don't care how many downloads I get. I get to put this content on LinkedIn. My pip cat people that are coming on the show are putting that content on LinkedIn because they look good. And so now there's two of us. I'm saying, oh, they think I'm legit enough to come on my podcast. And they're like, oh, these guys are legit enough that I came on their podcast. And now their sphere is coming into my sphere. And that's how I'm growing in my niche. This is not a get rich quick thing. This is a slow grow. It's a slow burn, but it works. So, and then you could reuse the, the, the you know, uh, reuse this content, social, blog, weekly email, testimonials. I've got 2000 people with a 60% open rate email. And all I do, it takes me literally two minutes to write this email because I already had my podcast person create the blog post for it. So it's super, super quick to send out these emails. And now every week, 2000 people times 0.6 are like opening my email and looking at what I'm doing and thinking about me. So lastly, win at trade shows. Who here goes to trade shows? Okay. Every single hand should be open because I don't care how niche your industry is. There is some weird trade show for you. Okay. I literally just spoke at the National Pizza Expo in Chicago. <laughs> like it's, there are, there are so many little teeny trade shows. Um, when you go to a trade show, do not spend a lot of money. Do not have swag. I know there's companies out here with a lot of swag. Let me tell you, that's a waste of money. Why? I just took two of those like Divi rockets and I use Divi, but guess what? That's going to my daughter tomorrow because it's her birthday, right? And now daddy brought her a rocket home for her birthday. Um, do a really simple booth. This pop-up banner, this and this all pack into one check bag, okay? The floor right here, I stole it from someone who uh, left it at a trade show in Vegas and I drove it back to Utah. I had my wife make a backpack for me and I bring this as a second check bag. I fly only Delta, which means I get first bag free, second bag $40. So I pay $40 to bring my booth. These other suckers are paying 70 grand to have their booth made. And guess what? I get 800 leads per trade show and they're getting 300 because it's not about the show, it's about the hustle. So I have no chairs, right? Nobody sits. Everyone, everyone just like lays in bed and groans at the end of the night. Uh, cocktail tables, by the way, you can get those shipped on Amazon, $70, ship it to your hotel. Don't pay $300 to rent it for three days. That's crazy. Do a quick demo, have half page flyers, systematize your follow-up, trade shows work. Get a corner booth. These inline booths are terrible. No, no elbow room there. You see, nobody's even like, so we just block block the hallway and then more people come because it looks like we're doing stuff. The other thing to do is now you've had all these pip cats on your podcast. You're connected with these pip cats on LinkedIn. So what do you do? Get them to speak about you on stage. Who's speaking at these things? The pip cats, right? So what you do is I, you know, that was, I was friends with them now. I would literally text them. I see you're speaking, uh, speaking to at this event. Sweet. Trying to get some people to check out Ovation. If it comes up, we'd love for you to mention us. I'll send you 250 bucks if you do. I would pay people to mention me on stage. So literally, I'm in the audience on Venmo and just like hitting them up, hitting them up. <laughs> this is worth it. Why? Because who's in the audience? You're the buyers. And who's talking about you? Thought leaders, people, press, customers you know, like investors, advisors, these are the people that they listen to. And so is 250 bucks worth a mention on stage? 
absolutely. What is 250 bucks gonna get you on Google? Nothing, nothing. Gets you customers at trade shows. And then lastly, get, um, you know, speak. When you do a podcast, people think that you know stuff. I don't know anything, but I bring on people who do, and then I look smart by association, right? So, so learn to speak, get, make a speaker page. If you don't have a speaker page, make one. Doesn't matter, just like literally go into a hotel in your area, set up a camera and make it look like you're speaking, right? You, you don't need to actually have anybody in the audience, right? I'm the only one looking at you. So, so go and make it look like you speak. Um, submit to, go to speak at events, submit to it. Even if you don't know what it is, the National Pizza Expo, I spoke last, I spoke on Tuesday. I found out I was speaking there on Friday because it was just something I had applied to. I had my marketing person apply to and they never got back to me, but they put me main stage speaker two of the entire show. And I didn't even know I was speaking until Friday because it just like happens, right? So the way that it worked is 2019, I spoke at zero things. 2020, I spoke at like two virtual. 2021, I spoke at like five things. This year I'm speaking at like over 20. So. Speaking gets so much credibility from stage. And then who am I, especially if you're on a panel, she just came on my podcast. She became a customer and advisor. And I don't know who she is, but she was really cool. Um, then I, he flew out. This is my customer from New York City. Flew out from New York to Chicago just to be on this panel with me. And it was just him and me. And because of this, we closed friendlies. And see, I have more than donut, more than pizza shirts. That's my donut shirt. So, the the shirts. Oh, um, 3 a.m. Instagram. It'll if you're up at three, they will show you weird shirts, and then I buy them. <clears throat> so, key takeaways: be accepted by your niche. Pick a niche and go into it. Find the pipcats. Connect with them. Second, do a podcast. Bring these pipcats on to the podcast and you know become actually build a relationship with them. And lastly, win at trade shows. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Only the suckers do. If you do this, it doesn't cost a lot of money. You can grow your business. Thank you very much.